Welcome to Real to Real Outdoors. This week, we're going to change it up just a little bit. We're going to get off the fishing topic, and we're going to talk about whitetail deer hunting. So uh, we got to give a shout out to our sponsors. We got Mick Ultra. Thanks for sponsoring this episode. Also, Captain Chuck's too, uh, here in Ludington, Michigan. If you haven't been there, full of uh, full archery shop. They have a ton of great products. So give them a call, check them out online, uh, stop in the store if you can. So let's meet our guests and get the show on the road. Hi, I'm Randy Dureski. I am the archery tech here at Captain Chuck's 2 in Ludington, Michigan. Hi, I'm Scott Keekstra, owner of Captain Chuck's here in Ludington, Michigan. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We are uh, ready to pick a topic here. I think one that we, we really should talk about is safety. And uh, safety with bow hunting is a little bit different than other types of hunting. But I think hunting, fishing, all of, you know, outdoor activities, all kind of, a lot of these topics are important uh, to talk about and to be prepared. And so, who wants to kick this one off? Go ahead, Scott. I'll let you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, safety... Safety starts with checking your tree stands, you know, checking the hardware on the tree stands. And I'm going to be honest with you. Until I had kids, I was not the safest hunter in the world. I mean, you have the opinion you're young, you're going to come back. But I've known people that have gotten hurt. And I think it's when I got married and had kids and I knew I had somebody Relying on me to come home. That's when I got a little more serious, you know. So, wearing a fall arrest system, and there are so many on the market. And I'll tell you right now, all of them are good. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some that are better, more comfortable. And I've I've heard every excuse in the book, and I'm sure you have mm -hmm. too. I don't wear it because they're not comfortable. You know, whether you're falling 30 feet from a tree and hitting the ground because you weren't wearing one, or you fall five feet and you're able to recover. That's life and death. Um, so safety-wise, I'm, I'm a big, big advocate for a fall arrest system. You know, I'd be lying to you if I said there's times when I've scooted out there and not worn one, but I already know that my tree stand is safe. You know, it's a, a lower tree stand. You know, I've already gone through the preseason and checked my sticks, checked my stand. Um, that all plays into it, you know. Safety is more important than, in my opinion, more important than shoot that big buck. Absolutely. Know? Yeah, it's uh, it's like you said, you don't. I didn't. You know, I have younger children. I I never used harnesses or anything like that. Um, and we have some pretty tall stands and in, in situations that I've been in, and now that I have children. I'm just, it just changes your perspective for sure. And with fishing too, I mean, all of it, I, I just, I feel I definitely make better choices. <laughs> but one of the choices that I, that I made was, um, you know, start wearing a harness. I always do. And like you said, comfort thing. Um, if you find that a harness is not comfortable, try a different harness. Cause they're right. Th um, this is the one that I use now. And we're, we're going to show, we'll show that whole process here in a minute. Um, it's comfortable. It, it it's laid out in a way that works. I shoot a crossbow, um, so it has pockets where I can have pockets. Um, if you were to shoot a regular bow, you'd need something probably that was a little bit more tight to your body. But that that thing works great. And the the new um, rope climbing systems and all of that stuff, it's incredible. It's safe. Um, you know. I hunt at a place in Illinois and they actually had a, uh, a guy fall out of a tree and was severely injured. Um, and nobody knew where he was. So when we started hunting down there, Jeff, the owner, he, um, he has a board and you write what stand you go to. And then what we did was, um, we got aerial pictures of all of his property and marked out every stand and now he has magnets that you stick at what stand you're going to go to and there's a guy down the road dan he comes and checks the camp every day and he knows if no if no one's there or one guy's missing he can look at that board and know where we are 
it's a really good system. I never even thought about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, but even texting your wife or, or a buddy and say, hey, I'm going to sit in my, my stand in the pine, you know, somebody kn- knows where it is, just so they know. Um, but it's like with boats, too. Hey, I'm going to run my boat to Frankfurt. If you disappear, no one knows where you went. And, you know, most of the time they expect you to come back to the same port. It might save people from looking for you. Absolutely. Uh, the, just the same. It's like a flight plan with um, with flying. It's it's just a good habit to be in, and it, it's not that hard as long as you make it part of your part of your system. As far as that, you know, all of that stuff goes. But um, yeah, I mean, it's especially nowadays with text messaging. Yeah, it makes everything so much easier. You know, it's uh, the one property I hunt. Even if um, even if my hunting partner's not hunting, I shoot him a message. Hey, I'm in the Northwest stand tonight, or you know, I'm in the pine tree tonight, or wherever it may mm-hmm. be. You know, and uh, and I can tell you because I'm one that's experienced that I came out a few years ago, and if he wouldn't have known where I was, you know, it could have been a different situation. Luckily enough, I wasn't hurt severely, so I got lucky there. But just him knowing where I was made a big difference. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever you can, really, whatever you can do, you know, one little slip, you don't think about it, but you know, that's about all it takes. And that's where the lifelines come in. Yeah, absolutely. So, because that's mine was a climbing, you know, I wasn't in a stand, I was coming down and my step broke. Oh, yeah. And, you know, 17 feet, amazing what you can think of in two seconds, <laughs> you know? So it's, uh, it's the lifelines are, are big. Yeah. And the, the new systems are, pretty incredible this is actually the one it uses from muddy um this is just a one that you would tie off in your tree but we're gonna uh, let's head over uh to your uh, your fake tree in the store <laughs> and we'll uh we'll give you a rundown on how all that works and kind of show you show you how to do it yes all right so we're over in the store we got our fake tree stand they told me i can't try it well, they encouraged me to try it, so I'm pretty sure it's not safe. <laughs> but I got my safety harness on. This is a muddy harness. Um, comfortable, very easy to wear all day. It's very adjustable, so good things. All right, so when you get to your tree with this, this muddy climbing system, I, I'm sure other people have this as well, but when you get to your tree, you have a rope that's hooked above your stand um, and anchored. They make an anchor kit for that onto your tree, and then you have it runs down next to your ladder next to however you're going to climb and uh it's affixed to the to the tree again what that allows you to do so if he holds this knot so when i get to my tree and i'm going to start climbing i can harness in make sure you close your carabiner and then that's all you're doing is sliding that up as you go the nice thing is if you are to fall it's going to lock but then again, it's easy to slide. So you just slide, climb, 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 slide it up, climb, climb, climb. This is by far the best system that I've seen. And I'm, you know, once you're in your stand and you're harnessed in, it's great. But with this system, you don't even have to um, change your harness. Once you get up into your tree, you bring that knot, give it a little cinch, and you're ready to hunt. And when you're done hunting, you get your stuff down out of your tree, get, you know, your bow down, whatever. Grab your knot, slide it, climb, climb, slide it down, climb. Anytime you fall, it's gonna it's gonna grab. This is a really cool system. Check it out um, from Muddy. Uh, I'm sure other people have it. They have it here at Chuck's. If you have any questions on it, uh, jump online and check it out. Very cool, very safe, convenient, easy, quiet. There's nothing to make any noise. It's not no metal buck, buckles or anything. You have a carabiner. That's it. Um, I keep my carabiners on my stand or every one of my lines has one on it. You can do it that way. That way when you're walking out, you don't have a carabiner, but you can always just throw it in your pocket or something too. Very easy. Use them, they're, they're, they're safe, they're, they're, they're worth it. Yeah, for sure. So, all right, we'll head back over to the to our round table and finish up our discussion. All right, so there's your safety rundown on, on uh, trees and lifelines and how all that works. So it really does function well. You should definitely use it. But I think we missed one thing. Um, what about like like preseason preparing your bow or your crossbow? Right? Yeah, it's super important. Um, there's a lot of different things that can happen, especially nowadays 
with these high speed crossbows the limbs are so bent and torqued and there's so much pressure on them um, you know changing your strings every couple of years is really important making sure they don't uh, dry rot you know if you've got them hanging try to keep them hanging someplace where the temperature doesn't change a lot you know don't put them in your garage for the winter unless your garage is heated because uh, going from cold to warm to cold to warm is not good for those strings uh, regular bows you know the same thing it's not as often as you need to with these high power crossbows but every three years or so you should be getting those strings and cables changed get them into us early we get super super busy so even after a season the previous year you know bring them in in december you know january february yeah. um you know we could turn them around a lot quicker then and uh, you know right now even right now as we speak we're three weeks out two to three weeks out on stuff so uh, it's really important i mean uh, we've seen them blow up we've seen people get hurt um i've had bows blow up on me in the past from you know all the years of shooting tournaments and things like that and it's it's not a fun it's not a fun thing yeah so, it's a it's a eye opener i would say <laughs> it, it is yeah it is and i mean you know you've experienced it yep. and it's one of those things that um you know any little mistake can happen um if your knock is broken you know you need to check your arrows carbon arrows you can flex test them just by bending them you know there's a lot of little things that go into that and people can always call and ask sure. you know so free to answer any questions that people have on that it's there's a lot to it yeah i mean if you see, i i think that if you're around here i know captain chucks these guys you know if you have a question they're here to answer the question but i think any any quality bow shop if you're not sure about something something looks not right those guys are gonna be happy yeah. to take a look at it um and it, it, you don't want to have a bow blow up right i mean much less drawn on a trophy animal that you've been hunting and then you then you have a failure right because you you weren't really uh prepared you know so the preparedness and it goes with fishing too i always say like how much would you you know you're fishing a tournament and you need one more fish how much would you pay for one bite right now mm -hmm. you know so you better make sure your line doesn't have nicks and stuff but it goes to your bowstrings and yeah. And cams and you know and limbs just, i mean limbs are a big one especially with the crossbows you don't see yeah. a whole lot of limbs on the newer regular bows going bad once in a while but the crossbows it's uh those limbs can break and, you, and sometimes you can't see it you know yeah unless you know exactly what you're looking for so yeah definitely if you have any questions on on your bow safety or crossbow safety get a hold of captain chucks or or any you know lo your local uh, bow shop Take your stuff in there have them check it out you know make sure you do change cables and yeah. strings i think and cables and strings probably lead to a lot of other things when when stuff lets go and yeah, it's usually the first failure point but um and safety is important and and do it you know just make sure you what you're doing is safe make sure somebody knows where you're at and uh and double check your stuff double check your gear you know yep. you're climbing a tree Make sure that your, uh, you know, your ratchet straps on your tree are safe. Yeah, and that's a big one. If something looks questionable, replace it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not worth taking the chance. That's for sure. So I hope you guys uh, picked up on something that helps keep you a little bit safer, a little more successful. And I hope you tune in again next week.